G'day, welcome to Stu's Shed. Today I'm going to have a look at the AGE series um, of router bits from Amana Tool. And in this case, this is a three piece um, OG raised panel set. And the, the set comes in a, in a storage box, it's got uh, rear earth magnets holding it closed, which is nice and convenient. And uh, inside we've got uh, three cutters. Now, two of the cutters are a matched pair. And these are the ones to produce the rails and the styles. Um, in actual fact, the this car, the first car here, which is the one with the bearing on top, that produces the the main groove that goes all the way around the inside of the uh, the rails and styles. The complementary cutter is the one that produces the uh, the cuts the ends of the um, styles in this case, and uh, they insert into the rails. The third cutter here is the one for the raised panel bit. Now this is a, quite a nice cutter. Um, I haven't had one before that has the uh, both the primary cutter and also the back cutter. So right now I'm just going to mount up the uh, the first of these cutters. Now in this case I'm going to mount up this one here. This is the, the as I said the primary one. It's got the the bearing on the top. Now with all these, if you're using doing a raised panel um, job you have to use a router table, it's not something you can hand hold. And just what I'm doing, I've got um, just some uh, lengths of, of uh, Tassie oak here, which I'm going to use for the rails and the styles, and just a, a basic piece of uh, pine or crappiata if you, um, if you like, that I'll just use for the raised panel. It's just a bit of a, um, a proof of concept as much as anything, a bit of a test for the bits. Uh, to see what they're like. So the setup for this first one is going to drop the router bit in. Now you always go down, well I find I, I prefer to go all the way down to the bottom and then I just raise it up by about a millimetre or so. It's better not to have it absolutely bottomed out. Uh, you can actually run the risk of getting a false um, sense of the, the bit being done up tightly uh, if you go fully, if you fully bottom out. Because then as you, you're cranking down It'll get quite tight, but it may actually be more that the router bit's being driven into the into the uh, shaft of the router, giving you a feeling of how tight it is, rather than what you really want, which is the collet restricting on the shaft of the of the router bit. So if I bring it up about a millimetre or so, um, you can be sure then that the collet, when it gets tight, is actually gripping correctly uh, on the router bit, and there's nothing else giving you that uh, false sense of, of uh, tightness. Let's lift that up. And now I'm just going to drop the router down to the, uh, the working height. Uh, first one I've got a bit of a macro adjustment here from underneath. And I can just turn the router on because I've got the control of the, uh, the router table from the side. And the last thing I always like to do is actually lock the, uh, the plunge, or engage the plunge lock. Just so there's no chance of uh, any movement in the, uh, in the shaft. Let's get down to eye level, and what I'm doing here is I'm just raising and lowering the router bit just so the end of the Roman OG profile is going to end up flush with the top of the uh, top of the uh, rail and style here. Now I've already done a quick adjustment on the fence just so I can clear the, the router bit. Now I want the fence to actually run in line with the edge of the router bit. That way the router bit's uh, bearing itself becomes part of the uh, what's going to guide the material past the router bit. And I'll just use a straight edge for that. And let's basically hold it up against the bearing, bring the fence in, and I run it back and forth. And I can just see the bearing being turned, but I can't f I can still feel it running rubbing fully on the fence. So I know that the fence is going to be taking the you know, it's basically going to be the thing that's guiding the work primarily, but the bearing is there as well for when the work is passing the centre area, which is obviously a bit of a void. Now, just got that about right. So it's going to lock the fence off. And as you see, it's very easy, very quick to, to set this up.
it certainly doesn't take much to, you know, create what's, what is basically the primary part of the of the uh, the feature of the the door or, or whatever you're using the raised panel for. It could be the, uh, the side of your carcass for a, uh, some furniture or a raised panel door if that's what you're looking to create. And um, yeah, the router bits uh, works very well. The the finish is very very smooth. It's um, there's certainly nothing there to, to indicate any, any issue with that router bit whatsoever. Now that we've done the, uh, those four, I'm now going to swap over to the complementary bit so I can do the, the end grain. Drop it down, bottom it out, bring it up about a mil or so. Tightening it off. Now in this case, when I drop it down, I don't have to line it up with the top or bottom, I've actually got the, the profile already that matches, or the, is the inverse of this profile, so I can line it up exactly using one of the, uh, the rails, or in this case one of the soles that I've already cut. Now at this point, you want to carry the rails through using a sled, because the last thing you want to try and do is run that rather thin edge up against the fence, because as you get close to the gap, you're gonna, you've got nothing really supporting it, and there's a good chance of going at the wrong angle and cutting in too far and the like. And so in this case, I've got a, a commercial sleeve here, but I've made ones in the past, and you can have a look on the on the blog and see what I've done in the past. This is basically a, a homemade version of it. Um, and this is a, a nice one. Uh, it's got a, a perspex screen here that runs above the cutter and runs up against the fence, so I've always got something making positive and sorry, making positive contact with the fence, and still having plenty of surface area to keep everything nice and, and straight. So what we have to do here, up against the fence, bring the, the piece in, so it also makes contact with the fence. Lock it down. This has got the support plate here that will just give it. Make sure it's absolutely not going to go anywhere. And that's how easy it is to make the rails and styles using uh, match bits with a, uh, from a, uh, a door making set. I'll just put these roughly together. The other benefit too of this sort of joint is there's an impressive amount of glue area that's created with that profile. Um, so it makes the joint very strong even if you're just using glue, you don't need to use any other sort of fasteners. There we go. So that's the rails and the stoles done. You can see just because of the um, amount of contact area, it's, it's quite a strong joint with a bit of glue in there. Uh, that's going to have a lot, lot of strength. So now I just need to make the, the panel that uh, fits in there, the raised, raised panel. And for that we'll use this raised panel bit with the back cutter. Now I'm just dropping that down, so again that the, the cutters, the top of the Roman OG, just looks like it's coming flush with the table. It's about right there, and again, it's just particularly since it's such a, a large uh, diameter out of it, just give it a bit of a turn by hand, just to make sure it's not going to impact on anything. Bring my fence across.
there we have it, a uh, very easy technique once you have the, the right set of uh, router bits um, and on the router table this makes this sort of job uh, very easy to produce a, a panel, it becomes quite a feature of, um, of your project. So that's it, that's the AGE series of door making router bits um, from Command Tool.